This only works with high voltage batteries, such as this one. You'll see it's made by Craze Pony and it's LHV. That means it's a lithium polymer high voltage. This one here, same thing. On the back, it'll show high voltage, 4.35 volts, as opposed to 4.2. So we're gonna go ahead and sort these out. Uh, these Craze Pony ones, the orange ones, are going to be high voltage. And these ones here, by URAV are not high voltage. These are standard. So we're gonna stick those aside. This method does not work with 2S batteries. So we're gonna put that aside as well. And so here we go. So what we're gonna do for this method is we're actually gonna use a battery bank. And later on in the video, I'm gonna go over how to size the battery bank and what to pick. But first of all, we're just gonna go over how this process works. So it pairs with this thing called a charge board. So this is not a parallel board. For parallel boards, the batteries need to have the same milliamp hours and the voltage inside needs to be the same. So you're gonna have to carry around some sort of way to determine how many volts in each battery if you are to parallel charge. So the advantage of this is that you can plug them in uh, at any voltage. So this parallel board, allows you to charge at 0.6 amps and at 0.2 amps. So for smaller batteries, such as the 250 milliamp hour battery, we're gonna use the 0.2 amp setting. And for the larger 650, we are going to use the 0.6. So we'll go ahead and do that. We're just gonna plug these guys in. And again, the voltage does not matter. I just gotta make sure here, we're gonna to toggle this thing to 0.2, right there. And that'll plug this guy in. And point two, we're gonna do another one of these small batteries here. And again, it doesn't matter what the voltage is. So we're just picking random ones as long as they're high voltage and they're a pH two connector, then it'll work. So we're gonna do that. And we plug this guy straight into the battery bank here. And you'll see all these lights turn green. So when these green lights turn off, that means the battery is completely discharged. So again, this only works with high voltage batteries because this charge board wants to charge to 4.35 volts. Um, I did try doing using one of these, thinking that maybe it's smart enough to know to stop at 4.2 for a standard battery, but it does not. It will overcharge this and try to approach 4.3. So do not charge standard batteries. This only works for high voltage. So we're gonna go over the spec of this little guy. So physically, I like the size of it, but we're gonna talk about the milliamp hours. So doing the math, when you have six uh, 650 milliamp hour batteries, I wanna be able to charge 12 of these guys or six of these twice. And so when I do that, that uses up 7,800 milliamp hours. So 60, 650 times 12 is 7,800 milliamp hours. So I wanted to size a battery bank such that I'm not using more than 80% of this. So when I use 7,800 milliamp hours after charging 12 batteries, I still have at least 20% left in this LiPo battery for it to be safe and not discharge more than it should. So the reason why this particular battery bank is good has to do with the speed of the USBs. So a lot of manufacturers will advertise as 4.0 milliamps, or sorry, 4.0 amps. And what they're actually doing is in the spec and the paperwork, they're actually combining the speed of each of these USBs and giving you one number, making you think it's high. But in, in actuality, when they say 4.0 amps, it's probably 2.0 amps and 2.0 amps. And some manufacturers will have a high amperage output and a low amperage output. So the reason why this one is good is because it actually has 3.0 amps output on each of these USBs. So here's the spec. We'll see right here, it says output one, three amps, and then output two is also three amps. So when you're searching for a battery bank, you do wanna pick one that has the maximum amperage for each of those USB ports. Uh, this particular one I like because it uh, you press this button on the side and then it'll actually tell you the percentage. It's a little dark here. 
or it's a little bright out here, but it says 71%. So that lets you know how much is st still in here. Another advantage of using a battery bank as opposed to a giant uh, LiPo battery and then hooking up to a charger and then plugging in your batteries is that this has multifunction, obviously, right? So you can go ahead and you can charge your phone. Um, but what I like to do is I use this and if I'm in the field and I need to, or I'm having lunch or whatever, and I've flown quite a few batteries, I can charge my Beta FPV uh, light using the battery bank, like that. And so again, the advantage of having this is that it charges your batteries, it can charge your phone, it can charge your transmitter if you happen to have the Beta FPV uh, transmitter or radio. And I really don't have any use for a giant one of these. If for it to be functional in the field, you probably need something at least, I don't know, 20,000 milliamp hours. And that's just kind of cumbersome and large and heavy, and it only serves one purpose. So I do really like having this for charging my Whoop batteries. I forgot to show one really important thing. So with this battery bank and the spacing between the USBs and the physical dimension of these charge boards, we can do something pretty cool. So that fits there, and if you have a second one, it fits there as well. And so you literally can charge 12 batteries all at one time. And that's it. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment below and uh, I'll see you next time.